Alrighty guys, it is a super duper ultimate beautiful day in the bluegrass today. In the springtime when everything's gre greening up, it, uh, hey, it makes you do high quality dog training. I ain't even kidding. Eli, show them how green it is. I mean, when you come out here to work guys and you see all this greenery, <laughs> it just makes you feel like you've got a fresh start. And it uh, makes you feel like you're going to get out and you're going to do some real high quality work. And uh, what I want to talk to you today about is uh, how to do high quality work and not get bogged down in all the minutia of your dog training research. Okay, I heard, a, I heard a, an economist one time talk about uh, a concept called a complexity tax. And what the point that he was making kind of centered around is the idea that human beings have a tendency to make things more complex than they need to be. And in following the complexities of an activity or uh, a bureaucracy or a system, a lot of times you have a lot of wasted labor. Okay, and so that's especially true in dog training. You're on the internet and you're researching dog training and there's a million talking heads all telling you about how your dog should live and what you should do with your dog and what a relationship is and all that nonsense, okay? But look, I'm here to tell you that dog training really ain't that hard. It's just about getting out, putting in a little bit of work and being very, very patient while focusing on incremental progress. It's really that simple. We got a bunch of dogs here today. Uh, so I got a, uh, this, look, look at this dog here, he's a cool dog. That is a Deutsch Drotter, or well, I'm probably not saying that right, but a German wire-haired pointer, right? And see how I got him to stop on that whistle there? You know, all I did was I started doing that real close, and then uh, every day I would move a foot away from him, you know? Okay, good dog. You see, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. This dog here, you know, he hangs out, and every so often I'll tell him to do something, and I'll tell him up close, and then I'll tell him a little farther away, and the next thing you know, I can blow this whistle, and he'll set at the end of a football field. You know, he can be in a, in a, in a dead run, you know, after a dummy or a bird or whatever, and he'd just, you know, stop, you know. And people say, oh, wow, Stoney, how'd you do that? Well, it really wasn't that hard. I just started doing it really close, and uh, then I moved a foot away every day until I got pretty far out there. That's pretty simple. Now look at this little dog here. This little five-year-old dog uh, belongs to a lady that, uh, you know, she's getting a little older and so she has some mobility issues and so this dog had got, got, kind of gotten out of sorts, you know, and when he first came here he wouldn't walk on the leash. He'd bark at everybody, he'd lunge at the other dogs and stuff. Whoa, watch out big boy, I'm mean, knocking everybody over. And uh, so what do we do with him? We just put him on a leash and we walk him around and we're real patient with him. And uh, whenever he's good, hey, sit down there. I got a little dog crack in my pocket. I pull out a little bit of dog crack, give it to him, you know, and uh, he loves dog crack. <laughs> so he says, hey, Stoney, you mean uh, I don't have to bark and jump up and act crazy to get attention? And I'm like, no, dude, you know, let's go out here early in the morning. Let's get a little exercise in, burn off some energy. And then when you settle down, when you're in the right mindset, I can show you, the dog, how to best navigate life so that you get access to the things that you like. Because when a little dog like this behaves poorly, it's almost always just because they want attention, right? You know, they don't get up in the morning and decide that they want to behave poorly to make your day, you know, uh, uncomfortable or un unhappy, right? They just kind of get a little full of themselves. Hey, wait. And, uh, when they get a little full of themselves, they start negative attention seeking. And you know, the thing about negative attention seeking is, well, uh, you know, it works, right? Babies cry, people pick them up and they cry more. I mean, that's just how life works. <laughs> All right, who's over there? Come here, Lucy, come here. All right, so now here's a little border collie. Now this dog, ah, oh, this dog belongs to a nice young girl in her 30s, I guess. And so she was, uh, she was in a pen or something down in Eastern Kentucky. And uh, let me show her a little dog crack there, get her attention. And uh, she didn't have any manners, you know. She didn't, she'd never done anything. She'd never been to town. She'd never really been on a leash. And so she came here a few days ago. And, of course, these border collies, they, uh, you know, they have a lot of energy. And they kind of, they uh, fixate on things. And if they don't, you know, if they're not in a good environment, like if you pin a border collie up, they get real neurotic, you know. And uh, so this dog has some weird habits. You know, and so you'd say, Stoney, well, how do you deal with this habit? And how do you deal with this other habit? Well, listen, I don't need an encyclopedia of how to deal with individual situations because I know if I do the right things, you know, if I get out and I exercise my dog, if I engage in structured positive reinforcement activities with my dog, then that's going to keep all the bad stuff from popping up. Whoa, slow down there, nerd. And so when I'm walking around, 
you know, I've just got to be willing to understand that for the first few weeks I'm trying to walk this dog, I'm going to get a little bit of tension like this in the leash, you know, and it's okay because, like, you know, when I put this dog on the leash, the first time she, you know, she looks at me and she says, Stoney, well, that leash is getting in the way of me having a good time. And I understand that concept. But what I'm going to show her by continually putting this leash on her and doing activities with her is that this leash represents a lot of you know potential interaction between us and that interaction can be very positive if she will just allow it you know and so if during that process I have to put up with a little bit of pulling on the leash okay you know okay no, no big deal I'm not too worried about it too often you know you get on the internet and you'll watch videos and it looks like like a guy like me or somebody is just you just there's taking a dog and they you know you take it you bring it to training slow down now bring it to training and bam it's just perfect overnight well no guys that's not how it works you know it's not how it works at all it, we you know all dog trainers we just got to do a little bit at a time you know and uh, we do it and and every time that we do it we try to refine how well we do it so right watch how we walk around this course you see how this dog is pulling on this leash a little bit around this whole course <laughs> look see this here well what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to keep walking around this course until the dog gets it right, you know, okay? And out of all the things I've ever seen stand in the way of people being good dog trainers, it's just not being patient enough and not being willing to put in the work. And so what you're going to watch me do here is I'm just going to put in the work, you know? And look, it ain't really that hard to work. You know, the only hard part about uh, doing good dog training, really, to be honest with you, is being patient. You know, especially if it's your own dog. You know, your own dog's kind of like your own children. You know, it's one thing to coach somebody else's children. It's an entirely different thing to coach your own children. Wait. Easy. Uh, you know, because you have expectations. You, you have high hopes for them. And then when they don't live up to those expectations, it kind of hurts your feelings and you get frustrated. You know, so don't worry about that. But see how this dog's leading me through this course right now? Okay. I mean, listen, you know, a week ago she couldn't even do this course. So the fact that she's not doing it perfectly now, that doesn't bother me. You know, I'm just going to do it and do it and do it, wait, until she gets it right. And, uh, you know, this is a good lesson for you non-religious people. Like, uh, even if you don't believe in the Bible, it's not a bad thing to investigate sometimes because, you know, the Bible is a metaphorical representation of, of all the internal conflicts that uh, human being can go through. And so like a perfect analogy from the Bible to dog training is the, the patience of Job. All right, so Job was a fella in the Bible and uh, you know, he, uh, he was a good fella. You know, he, he, he was a very righteous man. And uh, the devil kind of told God, he said, well, the only reason that Job is, a, you know, is, is sticking to your to the laws, you know, is doing what he's supposed to do is because you've blessed him with so many nice things, okay? And so God said, well, I don't think that's true. And the devil said, well, let's see. And so they put Job through a bunch of crazy tribulations, you know, killed his family, his wife, his pestilence, disease. I mean, you name it, it was awful. But through it all, Job would not renounce God. And at the end of the story, Job gets back everything he lost plus tenfold. And uh, that's the same thing with your dog training, right? Okay, look, I'm going to put some work into this dog. And it ain't always going to be fun for me to walk this dog. But as long as I stay patient, as long as I stay focused, and as long as I look into the future, right, it's going to pay off. It always does with dog training. And uh, so what, like out of all the emails I get, I think... Honestly, the people that just are always switching up, that's what causes the most problem. What's this, the third or fourth time I've done this, Eli? Yes, sir. All right, so look, this dog's already starting to do better. Now look, I'm going to, you know, like here's the thing. When you're doing dog training, you always, you always want to be able to do what I call one finger walking, you know. So imagine I was in an industrial accident and I lost my pinky finger and my thumb and my pointing finger and my ring finger and that's the only finger I had left right that's the finger I have left that's I want to be able to walk my dog with that come on dog so you always want to think like that and so we're going to continue to do this course easy until I can make it all the way around the course up, up, up. 
with one finger walking. Easy. Wait. Very nice. And then we'll grab another dog. Easy. Wait. Up. Too late. Too slow. On the uptake. Wait. Easy. <clears throat> Easy. Easy. Good dog. Very nice. Yep. Good. Now it's very, very, very important that you control your vocal inflection when you're walking your dog and you're trying to, you know, get them to, to do good loose leash walking. You want when you're talking to them, you want to draw all those words out. Hey, come here, nerd. You can't keep missing that same barrel every time. Uh, now, so you'll notice how when I talk to her here and I'm trying to calm her down, easy, easy, good, wait, good, easy, very nice. See how those words, I'm drawing those syllables out. Look, one finger, it's looking pretty good. Easy, wait, easy, very nice. Yep, that's perfect. Perfect. Easy. Wait. Easy. Very nice. Yep. Now, if I can get all the way around it, this time, easy. Wait. Then, I'm going to let her go. And, you know, the point I'm trying to make to the dog is if she'll come out here and, uh, you know, be cooperative, easy then what I'll do is I won't uh, make her do it a whole bunch of times. You know, all you got to do is do it right. You know, and in life, you know, that's what you want. You know, you go get a hamburger. You know, you don't ask them for two hamburgers if they did the first one right. You know, it's that simple. Now, see how this dog's doing it right? Wait. I didn't have to fuss. I didn't have to do much of anything except just stick to my guns and have a lot of patience and be willing to keep walking. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, now I've about got this dog lined out. Now, so a couple of things are going to have happened here. One is me and this dog spent some quality time together and the dog learned how to engage in an activity and be cooperative with me. Wait. And then two, the dog makes an association between doing the behavior properly and getting her free time, right? Because, wait, that's always the best part of work, guys, is getting off work, right? Easy. You know, like well, a lot of times when you're talking about positive reinforcement training, everybody thinks that food, that's so important. Well, look, the food's just a, a teeny little fraction of good positive reinforcement dog training. What you're trying to do is make the dog understand how, sit, coming and being still and having good manners leads to access. So in this case, that dog finally got loose leash walking right. So now, oh, I'm gonna love on her a little bit and I'm gonna take the leash off of her. Oh, you're a good dog. And now she's off work. She can go do whatever she wants to. So as Jocko Willink would say, discipline equals freedom. Now we'll get this dog here. Come on, Sophia. And we got the same rule going on. Let me adjust my leash properly. All right, so we're gonna go over here. Oh, come on, Sophia. Very nice. Now, you'll notice when I started this video, guys, I was out in the field. Now, the reason I was out in the field is because when I have dogs that are real excitable, what I do is I pre-fatigue them before I work them. That's why, that's why it's really hard to do good dog training, wait, if you don't have the space to do good dog training. You know, and that's one thing we, you know, I could build a bigger building here and house more dogs, but it takes the amount of building to green space ratio that I have to really do a good job. Come on, dog. Up. Now look, we're getting this right off the bat with Sophia. Up, 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 up. Oh, you missed a tire. Oh, so she missed one tire. Okay. And you might say, well, Stoney, don't be a stickler. I wouldn't be if uh, this was Sophia's first week or second week, but since it's not her first week or second week, I'm going to have to be a stickler, you know, because I'm a very patient person, but I do have high standards. Wait. Easy. So we're going to do it again. Now, notice my finger, okay? This is my rule. If you want free time, okay, then you're going to have to walk on a leash that's loose enough for me to handle with one finger. Come on, nerd. 
Good. Now you see how I switched my vocal inflection there? I got a little bit more high pitched and my syllables got closer together. This dog over here was going a little too fast. Well, Sophia's tired, so she's going a little too slow. If they're going a little too fast, you draw your syllables out, lower your tone. If they're going a little too slow, then you uh, increase the pitch of your voice and increase the cadence of how you're talking to them. So like right here, I had trouble with this before. So watch, I'm gonna go, come on Sophia, up, 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 up. Higher pitch, faster cadence. Very nice, up. Good dog, okay, now I'm getting this right over here. Good dog. Now Sophia's gonna be going home for before too long, so good, I need to, hey, come over this way. We're gonna go ahead and go through these cones. Let me get my barrel fixed. So not only am I going to do the cones with Sophia, I mean the obstacle course with Sophia. Good dog. We can come over here and go through these barrels and cones. Oh, come on, Sophia. And she starts lagging on me too much. I might reach down here and show her I got a little dog crack. <laughs> oh, that's a good dog. Uh, you can be pretty tired. I pull out that dog crack and, uh, oh, inside the cone. I pull out that dog crack and fire him right up. <laughs> Oh, you're a good dog. You like dog crack, don't you? Very nice. Come on, come on. Good. I'm going to do a little inside turn. Woo! For some dog crack. Look at her attitude come up for that dog crack. Oh, very nice. You don't get your dog crack yet, though. Very nice. I'm going to walk along my little side block here and get me a sit. Sit. Now, that's perfect. So, I'm going to give her a little piece of dog crack. Very nice. Now, when you give them a fat treat, you have to give them time to eat. Let's go. Then I'm going to turn around here, sit, stay, give her that Darth Vader hand, and I'm going to walk away. She has to stay there for a minute. And she did all that pretty closely to perfect, or pretty close to perfectly, I guess is better English. Oh, so she's a fine animal, and she gets off of work. And then look at this little guy here that was aggravating me earlier. Jace, are you wanting to do a little work? Now, this guy, he used to be a wild character, guys. When he first got here, he was something else. I never... Whew. I mean, he was something else. But look, now, you know, he wants to work. He likes the attention. He likes the approval. Whoa, don't get in front of me. And so we're going back to our one finger rule here. Very nice. Oh, you're a good dog. Oh, just a very good dog. Oh, super dog. Like ya. Good dog. Up. Very nice. Wait. Good dog. Now look guys, you know, when I say be patient, like, I mean be patient. So what if it takes a, a month or two months to get them to walk nicely on a leash? You'll get it just because I can do it in a few weeks. Look at my place. I mean, of course I can get it to, look, but don't click on those videos and then get disappointed with yourself or your dog because you're not making progress as quickly as somebody does it for a living. You know, I mean, it, it, that's the big that's I'm telling you that's the biggest problem in life in general is people they get disappointed and when you get disappointed your performance lags and when your performance lags then you get more disappointed wait guys this doesn't always go smoothly for anybody you know I mean I've been doing it for a long long time and so it goes a little bit easy a little bit more smoothly for me than it does for you guys but you know when it ain't as quick it's just clicking in videos like you think wait easy uh, let's see what else kind of dog we got around here, Eli. Oh, you're not going to cheat me, dude. You get over this right here. Bo, you want to walk? We got a giant uh, German short hair around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find him. Oh, get up here. Sit. Now, this is a little dog. Let's we'll see if we can find a big dog. Oh, Sophia, what are you doing? Hey, Bo. Bo, come on. Oh, that's a good dog, Bo. Now look, so here's another, this is a giant, this is, a, this is the world's biggest short hair. I mean, he's giant, you know what I'm saying? And we'll see if I can walk a giant short hair with one finger. Come on, Bo. Come on, come on. Up, up. Now, Bo's kind of tired, and if they get a little bit too tired on you, you might want to charge them up. Look, I'm going to give him a hit of dog crack. I give him that hit of dog crack, and he should start doing a little better. Very nice, Bo. Oh, ho, ho. very nice. You have to remember, guys, dogs... Just like humans are incentive-driven animals, sometimes you need a little extra incentive. Wait, 
but you can't give them too much of that dog crack or then they just become kind of immune to it. <laughs> They'll hold you hostage to it, you know. Good dogs. Always remember when you're doing your food work, you front load your food work to the beginning of your program, but you have to fade off of it very quickly if, uh, you know, if you want reliability. Wait. Oh, you're a very nice dog. Easy. You are a very nice dog. Oh my gosh, I've never seen such a such a coordinated giant German short hair. Oh, can you wait? Good, easy. Very nice. Up, let's go over here. Let's go this way. Come on, come on. Good. Oh, come here. Sit. Oh, now see this here? He sat a little behind me. I was in, reaching in my pocket to give him a little dog crack, but he knows better than this. He's not getting any dog crack for that. Let's go. Come on, nerd. Good dog. Come on, come on. Oh, if you want a little bit extra, you got to work a little bit extra, dude. Oh, I have patience, but not that much patience. Oh, very nice. Oh, come on. Weasel your way around here. Good dog. Oh, good dog. Very nice. Very nice. An inside turn. Oh, very nice. Good. Now let's see if we can get us a little better sit here. Using our side block and sit. That's quite a bit better. I give him a little hit of dog crack. Oh, that's right. Let's go. All right, we'll move over here. Go ahead and put him on the table. And just little workout session with a stay. Sit. Stay. Now, if he stays there, then uh, I'm going to let him off and he can go back to doing his own work. If he gets up, then we're going to do it again until he gets it right. Oh, and I'm not going to be fussing at him because he just needs a little love and patience and exercise to be a good dog. All right. Now, uh, I, well, you know what I'll do is I'll go in here in a second and I'll get another dog and I'll show you how the same, you know, principle of exercise and patience and uh, incremental improvement applies to other things. Uh, what do you think we should do, Eli? Maybe a, a Frisbee or something? Oh, yeah. That's what we'll do. Let's go get a Frisbee. Okay. All right. Now, talking about patience, <laughs> let me tell you about something that'll test your patience in the dog business. Uh, this is an awesome little dog that came up here from Nashville and uh, <laughs> the night before she came her owners they're going to New Zealand for a honeymoon right and so they've got this big fancy trip planned and uh, so well in advance they called me and said hey Stoney can my dog come stay and I was like yeah cool bring it up here I'll work with it while you're gone and when you come back you know not only will you be happily married and have been on a big adventure you'll have a dog that minds perfectly now <laughs> they call me the night before they leave and uh, she's come in heat, which, <laughs> listen, I don't know if you've ever rent, been around boy dogs and uh, girl dogs in heat at the same time, but it is a nightmare. If you're a kennel owner, hey, I mean, it's a straight up nightmare. And normally I would say, hey, well, look, let's postpone, uh, let's postpone this trip. But they're going to New Zealand. You know, they're getting married. I can't mess up their marriage plans, you know. So we bring the dog anyway. But the kind of problems that it creates is not only does a dog have kind of a you know, hard time focusing, especially during their first heat cycle, it drives everybody else in the kennel completely crazy, you know. So we have to get this dog out and work her separately a lot, which it kind of interferes with the flow of how I do things, you know, and it interferes with the way the dog learns because this dog is, you know, she's watching everybody else play. And she's like, why can't I do that? So you could see where that would be frustrating, all right. So anyway, so we get her out every day and we know she's going to be a little bit frustrated we know she's a little bit hormonal and uh so i'm going to try to work on some obedience with her but the reality is that when i first bring her out ah uh, she's got too much physical energy and she's got uh too much hormonally influenced mental energy so what do i do i come out here and i pre-fatigue her you know and this is really the key guys if you have a dog that for whatever reason is having trouble self-regulating Hey, nerd, then take them and bike them, play fetch with them, take them on a hike, you know, do something fun and uh, help them put that energy where it should go. If I bring this dog out, I'm fixing to put a leash on her just here in a second. 
and uh, she's going to be pretty compliant because she's going to be kind of tired. If I try to put a leash on this dog right as soon as I bring her out, then uh, listen, all bets are off, you know, because she's in a frustrated state. And it's hard to focus when you're frustrated, you know. Oh, did you find dog? Luckily, this dog really loves to fetch, and she has a, such a tremendously high amount of retrieving drive. Come on, Luna. That I'm able to, uh, that I'm able to use the dummy to burn off that energy. If you have a dog that doesn't have that kind of drive, then you just got to go for a long walk, or you have to go for a, you know, a, take her on a bicycle ride, something like that. Come on. Now, how I judge when it's time to start working obedience is on that retrieve. You see, a minute ago she kind of darted off like she was going to head towards a shady spot. So I know. Okay. Well, I've I've kind of gotten away with the. Uh, you know, I've kind of gotten away from that uh, real hectic state. She's starting to get, you know, her energy level under control. She's starting to get tired a little bit. So now I'm going to put her leash on her. Good. Oh. Very, very nice. Oh. What are I going to do with that dummy? Oh, I forgot my little pouch. All right. So I got my long line out here. And the first thing, two things I'm going to work on so I'm just going to work on walking her. Good. And, uh, you know, making her sit. Just a little, kind of, kind of a little structured walk here. Good. You see how her tongue, the tongue is an energy meter, guys. When that tongue starts coming way out, it means they're pretty tired. Good. So you see how I'm able to get some pretty decent compliance here on the leash? Good. Sit. Good. Stay. Now I have my long line here with me wait but I might not need it but always take your long line when you go out with a dog if it's a high energy dog and you're just working on your obedience take your long line with you you know because it's pretty likely that a dog goes out it's got a lot of energy it's going to kind of start darting off you know if you have your long line on them you can just step on them so it looks like I'm not going to have to use the long line but I was prepared and like a boy scout or well what they call them now is just scouts my motto is always be prepared very nice very nice dog so let's take off we'll walk up here now you see that cutting in front of me stuff i'm not too keen on that you know wide up my long line she goes to cut in front of me again i'm just going to make her stop and sit and say listen you know you're not going anywhere if you're going to be rude we'll just sit here forever and again it's all about being patient guys She's being polite, and as long as she's being polite, we're going to make progress towards getting back up here towards my course. This dog likes going on the course because she usually gets a little bit of treats and attention. She starts to get, get a, you know, a little bit too far in front of me. Watch. No. Hey, sit. We're not going anywhere. you got to be calm. Remember what we're after, guys. We're after a nice, you know, just calm, focused walk because if the dog will walk politely then it's much more likely that you will walk them to do something fun and they don't know that on their own you know so you got to teach them and you got to be very patient while you're teaching them because it doesn't make sense to them you know they've been in your house all day been in your apartment all day and they're like hey i'm ready to rip and roar and this leash is what's keeping me from being able to rip and roar you got to take and spend your time lay the foundation make them understand the relationship between being polite on the leash and getting activities uh, getting access to activities that they like uh, and you also have to be you know, very persistent in making them understand that being rude on the leash means that these, those activities go away so she starts pulling no sit and sometimes listen sometimes you don't sometimes it takes a long <laughs> sometimes when the beginning of your walk you know this can take a long time and this 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 deal where you tell the dog hey listen if you're gonna pull on the leash I'm not gonna walk you much it really doesn't work very well without a pre-fatiguing session. It just doesn't. You see, she gets up, so I can go, no, sit. Now, if I hadn't pre-fatigued this dog, I would just be in a tug of war right now. So I know you guys have seen in books and videos about you know how to use the, the stop and go method of getting a dog to walk on a leash, and you've probably tried it and it didn't work for you, okay? Try it again, but use a pre-fatiguing session, and you'll probably have a lot more success. It's no guarantee. You know, it doesn't always work, but for some dogs, it works very well. And that's one of the things you're going to notice 
when you're doing your dog training is that like a lot of people are talking about a lot of things <sighs> and I kind of divide that you know those things into two categories things that are simple that's the ones I'm gonna try because I like to keep it simple stupid you know I mean that's that's kind of my rule and uh, not that I came up with it but if you've ever done sports if you've ever done any kind of activity that required a high level of performance you will always have your coach your instructor come back to hey, it's, it's the fundamentals right okay and anything that revol re anything that requires me to to you know think in terms of complicated relationship <laughs> you know narratives I kind of put that over there and I ain't fooling with it stage wait good so we're gonna do the same thing with this little dog that we did with the border collie uh, I'm throw my stuff over here good so I'm gonna walk her until I can you know get her squared away and I can walk her with one finger and if that happens on our first trip around then we're gonna go back back to play and fetch if it doesn't happen on our first trip around, then we're going to do it until it does happen, and then we'll go back to play and fetch. Very nice. Now, especially when a dog is in a state of hormonal flux like this, like this bitch is in season, you can have good results with the technique on Monday and poor results on a Tuesday, and you can get frustrated. You know, you can get frustrated with yourself. Oh no, you gotta come back here and do it right. You can get frustrated with the dog, but don't, guys. Listen, it's hard. It's really hard for, for, for uh, uh, bitches to deal with their first uh, heat cycle. Wait. Good. Easy. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. See, we're on this one finger route here. That's real nice. Easy. Very nice. Now I think we're going to get it this time. That wasn't. I had trouble on those tires earlier, so I'm going to do it one more time. Good. Hup, hup. Good. Hup. Very nice. Easy. Oh, very nice. See, I'm drawing my words out because this is kind of an excitable dog. Hup, hup, hup. Very nice. Wait. Easy. Very good. Come on, come on. Up. Come on, let's get it right this time. You can do it. I'm going to stop here a little bit and really let her focus on proper foot placement because I want her to get it right. Easy. Very nice. Whoa, don't worry about that bee. Very nice. Oh, you're a fine animal. Very good dog. Oh, okay, now we'll come off of here. We'll work on getting a little bit of precision on our sits and our uh, inside and outside turns. Come here. Now, look, she's done pretty well. Hey, come here, dog. But she's kind of hot from that pre-fatiguing session. So I'm going to add just a little bit of dog crack into this equation here. Sit. Now that's about perfect. So I'm going to give her a fat treat. Remember, when we give them a fat treat, we have to give them time to eat. Let's go. Oh, you're a very good dog. Now, I'm going to do an inside turn. Very nice. Then I'm going to weave through these cones. Oh, you are a smarty smarty. You are a very good dog. Come on, come on. Very nice. The outside turn. Oh, come on. Remember on those outside turns, sometimes you got to kind of help them. So I drop a little bit of that dog crack down there. Good. Easy. Very nice. Now, so that you guys can get a, a sideways view of this uh, sit using the side block. I'm going to come up here, give you a different angle view. Watch, sit. Oh, and that's good. That's pretty good, but I didn't like the fact that it took a long time. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to walk all the way around this side block. Try it again. Good dog. Now, th this is uh, one of the things that happens with, if you do a pre-fatiguing session. Is sometimes you'll lose a little bit of precision. Uh, but you can get it back if you're patient. Look at that. Perfect. Side block, dog, stony. Let's go. Now we'll go over here. Oh, Do us a little stay out here in the sunshine. 
all the way. That's it. Stay. Uh, now, while she's staying, I'm going to go over here and get my dummy. And then, as her primary reward for engaging in all of that hard, complex, physical, and mental activity, we're going to go and go back to play and fetch. Good, because I want her to understand that, oh, if she'll work with me, I will work with her. Good dog. And that's all we ask here, guys, is we just try to put the... We try to put the work before the play. Get the work done, and we'll get right back to playing. Oh, you are a fine, fine, fine animal. Oh, oh, don't drop it. You should hand it to me. I shouldn't have to do the work for you. Good dog. Oh. Come on, come on. Very nice. Now watch it. Sometimes they'll drop it or not carry it. All right. So I'm going to bend down here, see if I can get it all the way back. Oh. Uh, you're going to have to pick it up. Come, 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 come. Very nice. Now I want to, oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I want to end my session on a little bit better, better retrieve than that. So as she comes, I'm going to back up and then I'm going to bend down. Watch. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to back up and bend down. Oh, and end up with it in my hand. All right. We'll try one more dog. All right, now let's, you know, let's talk about being patient as it relates to uh, other activities, like, say, chasing a frisbee. Now, here's a dog. Now, remember what I was telling you a minute ago about uh, bitches in heat driving, driving dogs crazy? Watch him. He can't get his nose. He loves a frisbee more than anything in life, right? Can't get his nose off the ground. Look, his ears are pinned back because <laughs> he's got things on his mind that are a little bit more fun than this frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel him, you know, I, I'm the same way, but uh, I got to get him over here and get him lined out. We're getting paid to work, dude. Come on. Okay, so like any of the activities that we were talking about earlier, whether it's general obedience or it's uh, 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 fetching or whatever it is, like, you know, you want to be patient and you want to focus on incremental progress and you want to avoid making it too complex. Now, so what happens when you get a Frisbee in, in the dog? First thing you want to do is you want to wing that Frisbee, you know? And uh, maybe the dog's got a lot of drive, so he goes out there and he gets it, but he won't bring it back. Okay, that's why you need to back up and you need to master them catching a Frisbee up close and then gradually work your way out. Now, don't even go to throwing a Frisbee for a dog until you can throw it and keep it pretty close to the ground because I've seen more dogs get injured trying to catch a frisbee than anything else in my whole career. They jump up and then they come down all crazy. So, like, don't even try this. Well, look, I'll just be honest with you. Do not do this. Do not do what I'm doing, right? Okay, and if you do do what I'm doing, understand that you're doing it against my advice and it ain't my fault if you break your dog. All right, so I'm here. I get this dog. We're moving around. And I want, I'm right-handed, so I want him to spin around this way as he goes to chase it. Like this, right? Now, so I'll get them out here and I'll start fooling with them. Oh, I'm going to And watch, I'm going to spin it. Oh, good boy. And I'll do that, guys. Sometimes I'll do that for a whole week. I mean, literally, just right here, that close to me. Here we are. We're going to spin in a circle. And then I'm going to spin the frisbee. Woo! And the dog's going to catch it. And when he catches it, he gives it to me, right? I just want him to understand that the whole nature of this game is catching that frisbee. That's it. You know, the big mistake you make is being impatient and wanting to throw the frisbee long ways. Well, there's a lot of stuff that can catch the dog's eye between way out there and here that'll distract him, right? So I want to make him understand that the, the game we're playing is catch this while it's in the air and hand it to me. Once he understands the concept of that game and, you know, he's competent at the activity, then I can stretch my distance out. So spin, catch bring it back oh you're a fine animal spin catch bring it back and then every day add a couple of feet to it watch so I'm gonna, oh going the wrong way I'm gonna spin catch it oh my gosh what a fine animal you are very good very nice good boy Bobby Nate Good. Go up there and get him. He like coming towards you. Very good, Bobby Nate. Very nice. Come on. All right, guys. Well, the wind shifted on me and I had to change positions. There we go.